Sometimes it really helps to run an audience survey if you are a podcaster. This really helps you actually uh, solidify your relationship with your listeners, but also get the uh, proper feedback on uh, the path you are following. Okay. So in today's conversation, I want to really talk to you about how to run an audience survey. So here's the approach I want you to think about. One thing for sure, when you think about uh, actually surveying your audience, you are actually uh, not only uh, learning from your listeners, but also you are also uh, growing your podcast. Because an audience survey will give you uh, the foundation to know what works, what doesn't work, what you what you should improve on, and that will help you over over time. So that's really important. Because if you are talking about something that people don't care about, your listeners don't care about, or you have a, a delivery that's not very engaging, or you are in a niche, or you are using uh, you are in a niche that is not a uh, really uh, suitable for the specific delivery you have, or you have tech, or you have uh, like gear that doesn't really fit your specific audience or your, spe your specific uh, demographics, then you really are doing something wrong, right? That's why when you have a survey, you have the possibility to actually glean uh, intel from your audience right off the bat. And the cool thing is that a survey is not really fishing. It's not about fishing for compliments. When you ask your audience specific questions, the negative feedback can help you uh, without hurting your feelings. So you got to really develop thick, thick skin when you actually engage in the whole uh, audience survey thing, okay? Then the cool thing is you can use the, the information, the intel you gain to improve your podcast. Plus, you may actually learn something that surprises you. Maybe your podcast teaches people how to bake bread, but the majority of your audience says that your voice is so, so, like, so soothing that it puts them right to sleep. So this is actually, this could be a, a great opportunity to rebrand, right? One minute your show is a uh, shala if you need if you need me the next minute you it's all about you rebranding and you are actually trying to have uh, the right strategy that really fits again once fits once again the demographics you are speaking to it's all about it's not just about the demographics it's really when you think about it, it's about what i call the psychographics in other words the psychology of your demographics in other words your demographics is is really cool but uh, if they are thinking in a, in a certain mindset, you want to really uh, fit with that mindset. At least make sure that you speak to them at that level. Now, let me talk to you about the steps you need to take if you want to survey your audience properly. Number one, you want to incentivize your audience survey. Because otherwise, why would, people, why would people spend 10 minutes of their time to kind of help you out if you're not willing to help them back, to, to, help, them, to help them out? So you want to incentivize your audience. It's all about actually, actually proposing something of value. It, it can be, it can be a product. It can be a content. It can be access to something. It can be, a, it could be anything. But the, but the key word here is incentive. Okay, right now people can sign up to take surveys in exchange for frequent flyer miles. If you don't provide a tangible reward for taking the survey, people won't know what's in it, what's in it for them. Right? It's all about what's in it for me. What value are you adding? What value are you bringing to the table? You can offer a prize or reward, for example. A gift card to an online vendor makes a, a good prize for one randomly chosen winner. Or you can offer extra content for all the survey respondents, such as PDF with a, a unique recipe or even relevant worksheets. So that's kind of cool because it helps you actually get things done a lot faster. And uh, so besides uh, incentivizing your audience survey, you want to make participation very easy. I mean, the fewer obstacles between your audience and the survey, the more likely they are to answer your questions. And the cool thing you want to do here is that you want to really uh, make sure everything is pretty straightforward and pretty specific. You want to mention the survey in your podcast episode and link to the survey in the episode's show notes. And this is kind of cool because you are able to get things done a lot faster. Okay. And you know, one thing you can do also, you can use a short link system like Pretty Link or URL, you know, to uh, make a clear link to your survey, and this is kind of cool. And it's very, uh, it's it, it's very short. It's very easy to repeat in the recording stage. And so, to to reiterate the survey announcement, put this in a blog post on your podcast website if you do have one. That way, you can really uh, make sure that you have several avenues for for promotion. This way, if your audience listens to your show while driving or up to the uh, up to their elbows in dishwashing suds. They can come back to the survey later. So that's just kind of cool. 
and mention the survey in your podcast call to action in at least three subsequent episodes. This gives your audience time to uh, consider their response. When it comes to uh, running an audience survey properly, you want to keep your audience survey brief. Don't try to really write a kilometric uh, survey with uh, 20 questions or 30 questions. Don't try to really razzle-dazzle your audience or whatever. No, no, no. People have, uh, have a lot of stuff to do. People are very busy, and it's one of those things where you want to keep your audience as brief as possible, as concise as possible. Go straight to the point. Five questions maximum, 10 questions maximum. If you go with 10 questions, make sure the questions are very brief, are very short, okay? It's, it's important. And the, the whole thing is that you don't let your survey uh, wind on and on and on and on and on for too long. Ten questions are plenty. Ten, five, ten questions are plenty. Five questions are even better. You want to draft out your questions in advance before you start typing them into a web form. That way, it's very easy to make changes instead of dealing with the website's quirks before you are ready. Okay. And the cool thing is if you want to really uh, increase engagement, it's just a lot better to go with uh, MC questions. MC questions are what? Multiple choice questions. Remember back, back in the days when we were in school? I mean, maybe maybe you still you were still in school, but back in the days in college or even uh, high school, multiple choice questions are were, were, are pretty uh, pretty popular. They are still they still are, by the way. And so, multiple choice questions are easy for your audience to answer. This option makes it very easy for you to process the data later on, if you have the right platform, though. Okay, and open ended questions give survey respondents more freedom to show you how they really feel, but the answers can turn into an epic sagas and you have no time for that okay the best practice is to really impose a character limit for open-ended questions if uh, in your audience survey and um, you can have like 200 or 280 or even 300 characters this is kind of cool bit, but 280 characters is actually the same length as a tweet and uh, your survey respondents are likely to uh, be used to expressing themselves in that amount so and that's kind of cool especially if you're trying to have something brief right if you remember as, as i said to you a little earlier to actually keep your audience survey brief the same way you want to make sure that you are actually uh, make you are getting uh, brief answers from your respondents so what's the strategy here when you think about uh, running an audience survey what what kind of strategy should you put in place this year well what should you ask in your podcast survey in the first place well, like everything else in podcasting, the answer is it really depends. It depends on your audience, on your audience. It depends on the pain point you're trying to solve. It depends on the niche you're in. It depends on what uh, the trends are in your niche. It depends on what your competitors are doing, right? So it, there's a lot of things that you really you can really think about. Well, one thing for sure, you want to group your questions by topic and put them in a logical order. You want to start with simple questions so your respondents are invited instead of overwhelmed. Keep the questions interesting. You want to intersperse difficult questions with easy questions so the respondents don't feel burdened. And you want to save demographic or personal questions to the end. It, this is kind of cool because it, it allows you to uh, establish that sort of uh, foundation right off the bat. Okay. And you also want to really, uh, you can also, uh, you can run an audience survey based on specific questions for your podcasting journey. Okay. Asking how your audience found your podcast helps you know which of your promotion and marketing efforts are actually working. If something works well, you could experiment with doing more of it. If something isn't working at all, you can consider cutting it loose, right? You also want to know their favorite aspect of their of the podcast. And uh, as unpleasant as it may be, their least favorite part too, because the whole thing is you have to be really, uh, you have to develop thicker, thicker skin to be able to accept all kinds of criticism. And this is a really important. And one thing for sure, you, you actually have to make sure that your audience will, will actually will respect you for neutrality because it lets them feel free with their opinion, right? Because uh, you want to keep uh, your questions and answer options as neutral as possible. At the, end of the, at the end of the survey, you want to thank the respondents. Make sure you get their email addresses if there is a prize involved. If you are going to include their answers on the show later, tell your audience survey respondents that you will do that. Just use the first name, no, 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 no mention of the last name, again, because the privacy of your, of your respondents 
is really, really important, especially in this sort of crazy uh, digital world that we're in these days. Let me share with you a few tools here. So when you think about running an audience survey, you do have a pot, you do have a, a series of podcast survey tools out there and different survey tools offer uh, different features and or ease of use. So you want to keep your survey goal and questions in mind when you choose one. So you can have a voice feedback survey tools. And so a voice feedback survey lets your audience respond as easily as leaving a voicemail message. Websites like Telby and SpeakPipe often have a free tier for simple surveys. So these are great for open-ended, for actually one open-ended question. One, not two, not three, not ten. You also have a Google Forms. So Google Forms has a, a gallery of templates that you can use to create a standard type of form. It's very easy to use and everyone knows the brain, so it's pretty low barrier. So the look is, for me, a bit dated, but it's totally adequate for your average survey. You also have a Survey Monkey. Okay, now Survey Monkey's free tier is probably too limited to be useful. If you collect over 25 responses in your survey, you will need to upgrade to view the rest. And uh, their paid plans are not the cheapest, so most folks will probably opt for Google Forms instead. That said, Survey Monkey does uh, offer a lot of features. If you think you would get the use, uh, like you know, the use out of them, that's really, that's really great. You also have Typeform. Now, Typeform has been around for a while now, and uh, the platform does a great job in terms of uh, scalability, so that's really good. So behind Type Typeform's uh, fun, pretty exterior is a robust set of tools and integrations, and the platform doesn't just help you compile questions and answers. It also integrates with other tools in your workflow. For example, your Typeform audience survey can connect with uh, Google Analytics, HubSpot, Slack, Zapier, and more. Topform even has an online quiz maker to help you grow uh, your, your brain. So that's kind of cool. So you have a lot of possibilities there. You also have a paper form. Okay. Now, paper form is actually a great recommendation if you want to have uh, access to uh, a paid product, especially if you want the full power of a paid product. So with full flexibility and a range of beautiful templates. You can make a survey that looks great and really draws people in, especially if you're trying to really incentivize and also engage people uh, like a quicker. I want to talk to you about the analytics here. So what do you do with all this data? I mean, you, you've actually gathered a lot of data, a lot of feedback. So what do you do afterwards? Well, your podcast, most loyal fans will be as curious as you are to find out the survey results, right? You want to share the data in an episode and a blog post on your podcast website. And uh, Canva has a free infographic maker, and uh, which can be a fun way to present the information. Alt text makes uh, those infographics more accessible for folks who use the uh, screen readers. Okay, and so what you want to do is that you have to really uh, present the, the survey results in a in a palatable manner, in a in a digestible manner, in a way that's really uh, interactive because. You are telling a story. Don't just uh, go out there and just put a bunch of numbers on the screen. No, no, no. You have to tell us. You have to tell a story. What are those numbers telling you? What are those numbers teaching you? What are those numbers actually uh, activating in your brain when it comes to uh, the the course of action you have to take going forward? This is important. Okay, take what you learn and apply it to your podcast. If there is something you can eliminate from your show, for example, think of it as a way of streamlining the process because. The whole thing is that you want to really uh, be as efficient as possible, and the survey actually actually is a great uh, actually uh, it's a great way to to quantify or also qualify the relationship you have uh, been forging over many months, over many years with your audience. So, what better reason to make big changes in your show and try and to try something new? It feels good to know that you are doing uh, what your audience wants in the first place, right? Just be sure that any changes you make fit your own vision and workflow and are not just the anecdotal demands of one listener, right? Because the whole thing is that you have a, uh, a show to run. You have a, mar a marathon to run. You, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. So you have to really follow your vision too. And your vision is important as long as you are adding value, as long as you are actually bringing a lot of value to the equation, as long as you are sort of forging a better relationship with your listener, if uh, if uh, you do not listen to all of, all of their uh, feedback, 
that's fine. I mean, you don't have to actually uh, comply with 100% of what your followers are telling you. You can listen and you can see whether or not uh, the, uh, the, 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 the feedback, the criticism is applicable to your show right now because you, you, you are the one running the show. Don't forget that. Of course, you get feedback from your listeners. You get uh, you get uh, criticism, but at the end at the end of the day, you are making the, the decision as to what is good and what's not really good for your uh, for your show. In the end, when it comes to survey, it's it's important to understand that uh, surveys are just the one conduit to actually uh, establish a better relationship a better relationship with your audience. And you can actually uh, customize your survey to make sure that it really fits your brain, it really fits your uh, your strategy, it really fits your your vision, it really fits your the kind of relationship, the kind of rapport you have built with uh, your your audience over time. What I'm trying to say here is that make sure that your survey actually uh, speaks truth when it comes to uh, the tone, when it comes to the brain that you have, because otherwise you are just uh, you are just uh, following a generic uh, generic strategy. That's gonna hurt your 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 podcast brand in in the long run. So when you per, let me give you an example, when you perform live on stage, you know immediately what the audience thinks of you. When you make a podcast, you hit publish and get silence. It's kind of it's kind of frustrating. So think of your survey as an invitation to your audience to participate in your show's creative process. And uh, so it's it's one of those things where if you remember that you're not perfect, that you're not you're just a human. That, that you you are actually uh, like you're fallible. So this is kind of cool because you can actually uh, invite others in the creative process. Use the same ingenuity that you would you would put into your own show in your survey mechanism, right? Sharing the survey data with uh, your audience can be uh, one more way that you and your audience explore your podcast topic together. Because at the end of the day, you might have an idea about your uh, your podcast your, your your podcast the topic. The niche you're in, but your audience might tell you, "Hey, listen, I think you're you're a little wrong here. If you were to do this uh, this this way, it would, things would be a lot better, and you will, you will actually uh, learn more from the topic itself." So you always have to really uh, think about it because you are tapping into uh, the, uh, the like uh, it, it's kind of similar to uh, crowdsourcing, but in this in this in this way, you are getting experience from the crowd. You're not really you are sourcing content. You are sourcing expertise. You're not just sourcing money from the crowd. You are sourcing more than money. You are sourcing expertise, acumen, inspiration from the crowd. And that's kind of cool. And that's what a, an audience survey does to a podcast. So here are the closing arguments. In today's conversation, I spoke to you about how to run an audience survey I give you the approach, the steps, the strategy, the tools, and the analytics. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.